everyone, and welcome to Book Break, your place for book recommendations from Greece Public Library. I'm Claire, I'm a librarian here, and I moderate As the Page Turns and also our historical group on Facebook. And today I have a very special guest with me, our director, Kathy Henderson. Hello. Thanks for having me. Oh, you're welcome. We're glad to have you. I know you've done it once before, right? No, I believe this is my first time. Oh, my gosh. I don't think I've done this before. No. Okay. So I'm glad we're talking about cozies today because that's one of my favorite. It's probably my favorite genre. Yes, I know you are a big cozy reader. Yes. We have a couple of people on staff that like cozies. I yes. know Steph, our fiction librarian, also is a big cozy person. Yep. I think the Mystery Facebook group often, she says, often deals with, reads cozies and talks about them on that, yes. on that dis I, book discussion. So. Yeah. So, and after today, like, because I read all cozies for this, I think I'm going to be a cozy fan as well, because yes. I think all of the ones I read, I actually really liked. So. Yes, there's very few I've read and put down and said, I don't like the characters or I don't like the setting. So it's a nice, genre, nice genre. I really enjoy it. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit about what makes a cozy mystery. Mm -hmm. um, I found a couple articles and okay. one of them, it's like, they're, they're pretty clean. Like most of the yes. crimes are not very graphic mm -hmm. or if there's a romance, it's like a lighter romance. Yes. Um, the sleuth is usually an amateur. Yes. Almost always. <laughs> yes. Often bakes. No. Yes, bakes I don't know crafts. Yeah, I don't. That is actually that is an official one. Um, usually takes place in a small town. A lot of times they have pets, you know, yes. or a cat or dog exactly. that you know. And um, sometimes, if you're really lucky, they're either a librarian or a bookstore owner. That is true. Two so. of my favorite series are based around the librarians and bookstores. Yes, yes, so. I have one too, which yeah. I think you've told me that you liked. So. Okay, so, but the funny thing is, is like you could find cozies about witches, you could find inspirational or Christian cozies, so it's it's almost like there's a cozy mystery for everyone. Yep, whatever you're interested in or whatever your thing is, you can find a cozy. Yeah. So, all right, well, I'm going to get started. As we all know, I like food and cooking, so I found one, and this one is just coming out. It's called... Mastering the Art of French Murder by Colleen Cambridge. And Julia Childs is a character in this How mystery. How can you not like that? I know. I know. I really, I actually really liked it. So the setting is post-World War II. So we are in Paris after the war. And our main character is Tabitha Knight. She's recently arrived from Detroit. She's actually, I believe her mother was French, so she's half French, half American. Okay. Um, and she's on an extended stay with her French grandfather. She was a Rosie the Riveter at oh, a neat. plant okay. in Detroit during the war. So she's got a lot of spunk. She's not your, you know, typical gal. Um, and her neighbor is none other than Julia Child. <laughs> That's awesome. It is awesome. So she is, Tabitha is learning how to cook because she has her grandfather and then her uncle. So she is a pretty despicable cook right now. So she's trying to learn the basics. She's also tutoring Americans and English. Um, but she loves visiting Julia and Julia's sister and learning how to cook and going to the market with Julia. And they make Julia seem like, although she's a side character, it's, it's pretty believable the okay. way they write her. Um, so one day they come home from the market and find a dead body in Julia's. <laughs> it's always how it happens. <laughs> I know, as one does. Um, and then come to find out Julia's sister had kind of had like a little soiree up in their apartment and this young woman was an attendee. So Tabitha had met her the night before. She was stabbed with one of Julia's cooking knives. Of course. <laughs> and one of Tabitha's um, like little name and address and recommendations mm -hmm. for being a tutoring was found in her pocket. So they both have ties, it looks like, to this murder. Um, so from there you go on, and the funny thing is, you, like, Julia's trying to perfect her mayonnaise. Tabitha learns how to cook an omelet. You know, you learn how to roast a chicken. Um, of course, Tabitha tries to start finding out. She's an avid mystery reader, so she wants to solve this mystery, and especially to get Julia and her sister, like, in, in the clear, the clear yep. you know. And the fact that her name and address was found in her coat pocket. So... Um, but I learned a lot, too. They, they mentioned that a lot of people in Paris, like, were kind of 
not anti-American, but they were in an unusual place after the war. Like they, they called it Coca colonization. Like they didn't want it like to be Americanized, like with the Coca Cola bottling plant or something. Oh, okay. They were adamantly opposed to that. Um, a lot of police had collaborated with the Germans, so there was a lot of suspicion there. With people even like to help this case, even wanting to talk to the police. Um, and then Julia's husband, of course, was there to help them like become accustomed and want the Marshall Plan. Okay. So he would have like fun events or um, cultural events and everything. And I didn't realize there was like a strong communist movement in France at that time after oh, okay. the war. So there was a lot going on in this book. And also just Julia learning to cook. You know, they had been rationed for so long sure. and had had things withheld for so long that that was unusual too. So I thought it had a lot of history. It had some fun things. It also had some preposterous things as, you know, it always amazes me how these young women are diving into the danger without any regard yes, of... exactly. Okay, well, someone was murdered, so... Right. and the killer I, won't come after me because I'm now asking questions. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yep. Oh, and of course, there was a dog and a cat in the story. There you go. Um, her, Tabitha's grandfather and uncle each had a pet, and they were Oscar Wilde and Madam X. Oh, so, funny. Yes. Good names. Yeah, so I thought it was interesting. I love the cooking angle, I, you know, and Julia. I, I would definitely, I hope that she writes another one about this character, because okay. I would continue reading it. Oh, good. Were there yeah. recipes in this one? Not so much recipes as, okay. like, telling you how to cook. So. Okay. Um, but I got an ebook because I had an advanced reader copy, mm. so that may or may not be different. I would hope they would include some yeah. recipes. So, um, yeah, but it was nice. very good. Oh, good. It sounds great. Have yeah. to add it to my list. <laughs> oh, definitely. Yeah. Um, what I'd like to talk about, one of my favorites, is called A High End Finish by Kate Carlisle. And it's a fixer upper mystery. Ooh. Um, and Kate Carlisle is also the author of The Bibliophile Mysteries, another cozy series I enjoy. Um, so we have a cast of characters. It's kind of inspired by that HTV craze, you know, the title Fixer Upper. Yes. There was a show called Fixer Upper. So it's all about a woman construction agent, Shannon Hammer. How appropriate that her last name is Hammer. Um, and her friends. So she's got Emily, who runs a tea shop. She's got Lizzie, who runs the bookshop. She's got Marigold, who does a craft store. And Jane, who is creating the newest boutique hotel in their cozy little Northern California town. Um, there's also her mother, Joyce. I'm sorry, not Joyce. There's two love interests. There always has to be a love interest. Of course, yeah. So there's Mac, who is an award-winning author who just moved into the apartment over her her garage. And then there's Eric, the new police chief. Okay. So it's a very quaint seaside town. Shannon's specialty is restoring Victorian homes. And that's what this little town is filled with. And if you want the job done, Shannon is the woman for the job. She can get it done. Um, she's grown up in construction all her life. Her dad was in construction. She and her sister used to go to the construction sites, and she learned lots of things. So her business is booming. She's having a great, great season. Her love life, on the other hand, needs a little bit of help. Um, so her friends convince her to go out on a, a blind date. She's very much against this, doesn't want to do it, but she, you know, you know how friends can be sometimes. Yes. So she says yes. Her date was terrible. She couldn't. She just couldn't wait enough to get away from him. So much, the date was so bad that at some point she threatened to kill him in order to make him, make oh, him stay away from her. Oh, no. Which will foreshadow the fact that <laughs> at some point later on, her date is found dead at one of her construction sites. Oh, great. With one of her tools. Oh, no. So her tools are all pink which you would think would seem a little sexist, but she says she loves her pink tools because none of the guys would walk away with them. None of the guys would want to work with a pink hammer or a pink sledgehammer. So that, but so one of her, her tools was found at the site. And of course, Shannon's automatically considered a suspect. A suspect. Yeah. So, but as the police investigate, she has an alibi, but now she's outraged because she can't work on her, we, she can't work at her site. Her mm -hmm. crew's got to stop. So she starts asking some questions and her friends are involved. Some, you know, everybody knew the killer somehow and they walk around and they try and find things out. And uh, the more she asks questions, 
the more the killer realizes who's asking those questions and then starts to come after Shannon right. and her friends. Um, she ends up in a uh, predicament where she could lose her life depending on how, it, how things go. I will tell you that she is she does not die. Otherwise, the series would not continue. But she's always in a hard spot. And eventually, the killer comes forward and she ends up apprehending the killer long before the police does. Yes, of course, because this amateur sleuth always does. Exactly. And the, co- why would the police know what they c- could do? Right. She's much. She's a much better sleuth than the police department. Yeah. So. Oh, but, that one sounds fun. Yeah. I like that, um, the house aspect. Yes. Because I'm also, I have certain shows I like on HGTV. Mm-hmm. I think you and I both like Hometown. Yes, That is my jam. Yes, indeed. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So it's a fun series. Okay. So it's got that, you know, that fixer upper vibe. It's and all the titles are some punny title of some some construction site. So oh, that's it's kind of that's fun. fun. Yeah. Nice. Well, that kind of leads me to my next one, which um, is Fresh Brewed Murder by Emmeline Duncan. And this is the first one in the series. It's a cozy. It's set in Portland, Oregon, modern oh, yeah. um, modern day. It, it it had like a very modern, younger vibe to me. Oh, okay. Um, our main character is Sage Kaplan. She and her business partner Harley own a coffee cart named Ground Rules. So, her uncle owns the land, and it's called like the Rail Yard. And I kind of picture like a lot, maybe like that lot in Rochester. What is it? Section five? Or oh, parcel five. five. Parcel five. You know, something like that where they have like food carts yep. and sometimes they have bands and entertainment. Um, so, of course, you know, one night she goes to check on her cart or do something and finds a dead body in front of her cart. The man turns out to be someone her estranged mother was very close to years oh, ago. No. <laughs> Yes. So that was the thing about this particular mystery is Sage had a lot going on. It was hard keeping up with all the storylines right? of Sage. You know, her mom is estranged. Her her father is a policeman yep. in Portland. Her brother is a an attorney who specializes in helping like at risk children. Okay. So um, Sage apparently was homeless for a few days when her mom, who ends up being like a criminal that swindles people. Oh, okay. And so she's been all around the, the world, like in oh, her wow. childhood with her mother, who eventually like abandoned her, you know, and yeah. went on to lead her life of crime. So, because oh, no. um, crime pays more than apparently taking care of your child. Yes, yes. So, so Sage, of course, has this person. The police are in instantly suspicious because you know they learn of the tie of her mom even though her mom has been Mm -hmm. out of her life so of course she wants to investigate and find out what happens um and then there's also a young girl named gabby who would visit the coffee cart and sage started a program where like if if you wanted to buy a drink for somebody else there was like a oh, board or something pay it forward yes, type thing. yes. Okay. so um she was trying to help like some of the younger homeless kids you nice. know in the neighborhood so the it did have a lot of themes that i thought you know are in cities today like that mm. a lot of people were angry because this lot there was a whole building of older homes across the street oh. that were being demolished yep for big high-rise fancy apartments and Mm -hmm. other things. You have a lot of people that can't afford to pay rent in the cities anymore. They're getting forced out. So this this theme of gentrification and also um, the runaways, and that was one thing I've actually been to Portland, and Mm. that was the the thing I found so very sad is not only are the runaways, they're younger. It's like a a young runaway hub or something. Mm Um, so that, I, I think, um, that had some more serious themes, but, you know, also you have Sage, um, her brother, of course, has a dog, Bentley, that, you know, she walks and people get to know in the story. There's a little bit of romance because there's, well, she actually has two suitors as well. Oh, okay. Um, so we'll have to see in the next one if she exactly. chooses somebody, but there's a, a food cart owner, a veggie food cart. Okay owner guy and then there's a 
another guy who's more like into like software and tech that she's helping, oh, but because yes. she's trying to like brand her her business and she's very astute and does tastings and mixes up coffee cocktails and other like non traditional things oh, okay. with coffee too. Oh, so she's trying to make it not just like a morning business, sure. but like do it off. Something that's kind of sustainable and yes. can run more longer longer through the day. And those those she does have recipes in the book. Oh good. So nice. Um so I won't give the mystery away. But yeah, it was it was kind of fun. Um I think I will continue i went ahead and checked out the next one okay. in the series yeah uh i think that's neat about what i found is that if you like the series there's often multiple stories mm -hmm. and i found you can get to know the characters so you're always introduced to the characters but then as you go through the series usually there's a plot line that involves one of the friends or somehow they're involved so i really do like you kind of get to know the characters right you know so yeah do they get the, you know, do they end up involved with oftentimes are leading towards one romance lead, romance lead and then it ends up being somebody else. And right. So it's, yeah, I do think knowing the cast of characters is a lot of fun too. Yeah. So. Yeah. It's kind of like books are friends type thing. Exactly. You feel like you know these exactly. people. Exactly. <laughs> What's your next one, Kathy? I like um, one called Sprinkled with Murder, which is by Jen McKinley and it's a cupcake bakery mystery. Uh, she is Jen McKinley is one of my all time favorite authors. Turns out she was a librarian in her previous life. Oh my! And has used that to make all her settings where she used librarians very realistic. Mm -hmm. uh, she also writes one of my other favorite um, cozy series, which is the Library Lovers Mystery Series. So um, in this in this book, we've got Fairy Tale Bakery, which is the brainchild idea of Mel which is short for Melanie, Angie, and Tate, childhood friends who get together and watch all sorts of classic movies. And as you go through the book, they'll off, as the situation comes up, they'll mutter a, a random uh, quote, movie quote, in hopes that they can stump the other person from getting it. They want them to answer it. So, Oh, that would be fun. Exactly. So Angie and Melanie are the ones running the bakery. Tate is the financial backer of it. He's kind of their silent partner. He doesn't want to have anything to do with baking. And Fairy Tale Cupcakes is just a, all the cupcakes you could possibly imagine in all the flavors and everything you want. So it's amazing. So they're very excited about this. They get an order for 500 cupcakes that's really going to put their place on the on the map. They're like, we really need to do this, even though 500 cupcakes is a lot. Turns out the cupcakes are for Tate's wedding. So they, they, they want to do it even though they're not a fan of the fiancé. So the fiancé talks to, to Melanie and Angie, and it turns out, of course, she wants specialty flavors, flavors that nobody's ever had before, and custom colors and things like that. And they decide to do it because this really would be, you know, a boon for their business. So as Melanie goes over to Christie's uh, place one day to go over the, ta the, um, the flavors of the cupcakes, she stumbles across Christy dead. Oh, no. And unfortunately, one of Melanie's cupcakes is in her possession, and it turns out that it was poison. Of course. So then, of course, Melanie and Angie are under suspicion, um, and it turns out that it was there was poison in the cupcake, but not enough to actually kill Christy. Okay. So then Melanie, so now Melanie's outraged. How could her, her business be part of this? Yeah. So she starts asking around questions and finding out how did Christy actually die because they need to know. Meanwhile, they're comforting their friend Tate, whose his fiance is, has passed away. <laughs> you know, so there's multiple levels. There's all sorts of people involved. Uh, her uncle is a police detective, so that kind of ties in. Her mom's kind of a, uh, a nosy mom who wants to know everything that's happening. So she's always worried about her. She's like, you're not going off looking for those crooks, are you? You know, that type of thing. So it's a lot of fun. I really enjoy this series. And in this uh, case, there are all sorts of recipes for different cupcakes, oh including my. the frostings. Okay. So much so that the author is now put, has put out a cupcake cookbook for all the cupcakes that have been all out in the series. Oh, that so sounds a lot fun. Of fun. Yeah. Yeah. So oh, I enjoy those. I bet. It, I bet includes that one. baking, which is one of my favorite things to do. So yes. Yeah. Well, the next one, I have a baker in mind too. See? Yeah. It's, it's a little bit of everything. It was called the secret book and scone society oh, yes. by Ellery Adams. Um, and Ellery Adams, I guess has written over 40 novels and she has several series 
um, I looked at her website and it was awesome because she's got resources for book clubs on yes. her website. Uh, and this one is the first book in this series, and there's currently, I believe, six titles in this mm -hmm. series. So, four women form a group called the Secret Book and Scone Society to bond together and help solve crimes. So, in order to trust one another, they decide they have to reveal, like, their most personal secret about mm -hmm. e themselves mm -hmm. and what really brought them to Miracle Springs. Um, Miracle Springs, the reason why I picked this up, Miracle Springs in, in this book is located in North Carolina. Okay. Not far from Asheville. And I love that. that oh, that part of the country. That part of the country. I have a you know friend down there, so I visited, so I could kind of picture it in yes. my mind. Um, but our, our main characters are, the first one is Nora. And Nora is a burn victim, so she has a lot of scars. She owns a bookstore. She was a librarian mm -hmm. in her former life, and her gift is that she can help you choose a book to kind of either heal your pain or help you solve a problem or just put the, the book you need in, in your, your hands. In your path that, yes. when you need it. So um, she calls it bibliotherapy. Okay. So she also lives in a tiny house, which is a caboose, so I was just like totally fascinated. <laughs> Wouldn't you with love this. to see what that looks yes, like? Yes, I would. I would like to go there and see this place. Um, Hester is a baker, and she owns a scone shop in the town, and she can create for you a comfort scone. So if you go in there, like she has a basic recipe, but she will add ingredients to like make a scone just for you that will probably bring back like one of your best warmest coziest memories oh, yeah so and of course i want that too right <laughs> june is works at miracle pools which that's like the reason why a lot of people come to the town because okay. there's therapy with these pools um she had a mistaken judgment in her own old life that haunts her and her family. And then we have Estella, who I kind of picture as like a Dolly Parton yes. type person. Yes. She is a hairdresser. She is like... A little over the top. A little over the top. People think she's the town tramp. Yep. But she's really not, you know. Um, so they all kind of have their own little mystery and why they were loners before. But together okay. they form a friendship. Well... Poor Nora, she meets this gentleman who comes to the train station, and she knows he needs help. He seems, like, agitated about something. Okay. So she says before she wants to choose a book for him, she wants him to go get a comfort scone. So go get a scone and come back. So they have an appointment for her to work her book magic okay. after he gets his scone. Well, unfortunately, <laughs> before that happens... He ends up dead on the train tracks. Oh, no. <laughs> yes. So, and then we find out that um, he was one of several business partners that are forming a development, like a new housing development oh, okay. in the town. Um, so, of course, the women have to, you know, investigate and try to see about buying a house there. And they're trying to figure out why this man died because they don't believe it's suicide, even though the oh, town okay. sure. sheriff, mm -hmm. you know, has claimed it's a suicide right, right away. Yep, they've um, solved it. So the other thing I really liked about this book is each chapter will start with a quote, and they they run all over the gamut. Kafka, Rumi, Lewis oh, wow. Lowry, a okay. children's author. Um, many titles of books are mentioned. Mm -hmm. And if you go to the website, like some of the things that people come to the store for, for like help, you okay. know, like getting over a relationship or, you know, having a pet pass away, she's got book list oh, so of books, books you could that, actually kind of read if yes, you were going through the same thing. Yes, that she would thing. suggest. Neat. So I thought that was really cool oh, as, yeah. as a librarian. So yeah, The Secret Book and Scone Society. I'm definitely going to read more of these. Yes. I've enjoyed the whole series. Yeah. So it's a great series. Okay. Nice. So oh, Good. So my last one also has to do with food, and it's called Up to No Gouda <laughs> by Linda Riley, and it's a grilled cheese mystery. <laughs> um, and she's also the author of Other Cozy Mysteries. So I, what, part of what I loved of this, this book is the title she gave her sandwiches. So she opens a grilled cheese eatery. <laughs> That's her dream job. Sadly, her husband passed away. She moved back to her small Vermont town to kind of reconnect with everybody. 
and she opens the Carly's Grilled Cheese Eatery. And she wasn't sure she could make a go of it because how many grilled cheese sandwiches can one eat? But apparently... I could eat a lot. <laughs> but apparently the high schoolers after school are a, a big fan of her uh, her snacks. So she opens her restaurant. She's got a great staff. She's got a... It's a small business. She's got a short order cook. She's got a server. And she bought out somebody's lease. So she came back. This was the great opportunity. She bought out somebody's lease. She knew that potentially something could happen where somebody else was going to buy the building, but she was she felt fairly confident that this would not. Spent a lot of money, redid the, you know, the diner looks amazing. And one day an old face walks into the into the diner and she goes, "Why?" She's one of those, "Why do I know that person?" And it turns out it was our friend from high school. And he was there to deliver the bad news that he had bought the building and he was evicting her. Oh, no. So she's five months into this new deal. It's starting to, to take shape. She's excited about it. She's starting to feel comfortable being back in town again. And then this happens. And Suzanne, her server, gets really upset. So much so that she threatens to kill Lyle, who is the, the bearer of bad news. And... uh just because she's so out, outraged at everything. So they try and, you know, go about the rest of the day, figuring out how they can, what can they do to solve this? Could she buy him out? Could she do different things? They were coming up with all sorts of ideas. And later, Lyle. Lyle is dead. Found dead in the parking lot. <laughs> um, Eating a grilled cheese. No. Yes. <laughs> you would think that these people would be like, why are all these dead bodies yes. around me? But so obviously Suzanne becomes one of the n- number one suspects because everybody, the whole restaurant heard her threaten to kill him. So they take her in, in for the investigation. Things aren't looking good for her because she apparently had a little bit of a past with Lyle and it wasn't always good. So they go through that. Eventually Suzanne is found innocent, but because Suzanne's involved, Carly feels like she has to, she has to figure this out. Mm-hmm. Um, she also finds a small dog, near the near the scene of the crime and she adopts the dog and calls him Harvati based on the cheese so all sorts of fun things like that um her sandwiches she's named um cheddar what is it here farmhouse cheddar sleeps with the fishes which is her version of a tuna melt (laughs) oh nice so all her sandwiches have really um neat names so as you get to know the some of the characters they do the investigation and again Carly gets herself into somewhat of a predicament where the killer starts the more questions she asks the more time more the killer realizes who's asking the questions right and wants to get rid of her so she ends up in a couple of dire straits and she does escape them and eventually we find out who the who the real killer is oh that sounds so, fun and there are recipes in this one also so i happen to love a good grilled cheese so i do too i, I might have to pick too. that one up so we have a bonus pick for people today because both do. Kathy and I read this one. It's called The Golden Spoon by Jessa Maxwell. Yes. Um, and this one, the way they sold it on, because um, I got an advanced reader copy of this, it was like oh, okay. a combination of Knives Out and The Great British Baking Show okay. or yep. Only Murders in the Building. Yes. So I was just like, yes, please. Yes, exactly. Sign I heard the me same up. thing. I'm like... Great British Baking Show and a version of Clue. Yeah. I'm in. Yeah, yeah. That's, so. that, that's good. So I'll start. It's the 10th season of Bake Week. So the only thing is, is it's set in Vermont instead right. of Great Britain. And we have a, a big ancestral home of um, Betsy Martin, who is our, who is that lady? She's the host. Yes, right. She's the host. And then... Um, Unfortunately, she's very upset because they hire a co-host for her, probably to boost ratings, who yes. is a culinary bad boy, mm-hmm. Archie Morris. So I'll let you take it from there. So then we meet um, several of the participants in the Bake Off, and they go through the things. And each day, it's kind of set over a week versus multiple weeks. So every day, somebody's eliminated from from the tent. So we go through the first one, and somebody's eliminated. And then one night during a storm, we... (laughs) Boy, was that perfect timing. (laughs) One night in a storm, uh, I believe it's Betsy who goes out because she thinks there's something in the tent. There's something about outside of the tent that's bothering her. And she goes out there, and there we find Archie dead. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> somehow trussled up in the 
in the workings, in the workings of, the of the tent. Yeah. So um, what I liked about it is that at some point you got to know the characters' stories and their mm-hmm. backgrounds and why this was important to them, why they wanted to win, what would happen if they did. And then I could also see where each one of them was potentially the murderer. Right, yeah. Because so. obviously it's kind of like a closed room where it's yes, the people on the set, mysteries. you know, yep. um, and it's told through the viewpoints of the six different contestants. So um, we have Lottie, the, who's in her 70s. She's a wonderful traditional baker yep. who has a secret reason as to why yes. she came on the show. Um, a man who sold his tech company. Mm-hmm. It's a very eclectic yes, group of very. people. Um, so, yeah, I would, if you're a fan of the great, British, great British baking show, I would highly recommend this. Definitely. It was a quick, easy read. Mm-hmm. I enjoyed it a lot. Yeah. Lots of old family secrets, too. Yes. So we don't want to divulge too much. But exactly. Yeah. And I'm hoping that, you know, there might be more along the lines of, you know, yes, this Yes, that would be a fun if they expanded, the, expanded yeah. it. So, and that one was The Golden Spoon by Jessa Maxwell. So... If you've read any cozy mysteries that you'd like to share with us, um, because Kathy is a connoisseur of cozies. They're my favorite genre to read. So if you can find her some good ones, that would be great. Or if you've read any of the ones that we talked about, um, let us know. We'd love to hear your suggestions. So Definitely. Thanks for following us, and thanks for listening to Book Break, and we'll see you next time. Book Break is a production of the Greece Public Library, made possible through the support of the friends of the Greece Public Library. Theme music composed and performed.